Hello, welcome to Fishing Squad. Well, I'm just doing a video about uh, a rough ground conga rig for deep fishing deep water rock ledges, like the ones where I fish in North Wales, for instance. Um, but it'll work on um, a lot of you know deep water rock marks. Uh, I'll just show you what you need to tie the rig. It's a really simple rig. It'll do other species as well. It's a strong rig. We're going to use. I'll, show, I'll just spin you around. So right, so you just need two swivels, a bead, an O'Shaughnessy hook and some 200 pound mono. Cut your mono at 28 inches um, and it's going to be tied on at either end of your at either end. One to the swivel, which is a 2 -0 swivel with a half blood knot and the same with the O'Shaughnessy hook. This is an 8 0 O'Shaughnessy. So uh, put the rig together and I'll show you how it's done. When tying half blood knots, uh, or any knots really, in strong line, so you can get a bit more purchase on it it's always good to have a piece of wood with some attachments on it. The, this is just custom made, so you know it's not really anything special at all. I've just made it myself, obviously. But like the nails are suitable for point swivels on, or on this wire hunt screw, it does both the swivel or hook, whichever end. It's just something just helps you out a bit. So you can put a bit more perch, just make sure the knots are nicely cinched down. Right, so I've got I've got a 28 inch length of the 200 pound mono. It's uh, Suffolk Zippy. It's quite supple for say it's 200 pound line and it does cinch down pretty nice. Um, I don't have access to a vice at home unfortunately. Um, so I'm having to use, obviously I use this like I say. It's just another alternative if you don't have access to a vice like I don't. Um, I'm looking at getting one because it does help massively with this type of thing. Uh, so yeah. So I'll just get my ATO hook. I thread my line through like that. And we're just doing a half blood knot. So, four turn half blood knot is. So it's one, two, three. Just wait there. Wait for, you know, we got there? Three, one more. Then back back through the loop and going back through here. So you've got, just wait there a sec. Struggling a bit here. Make sure you use plenty so you get a nice tag end. One, two, three, four. That's four. Can you see there's four? Twist. Go back through that loop. Before you even start trying to cinch it down, just catch it in the loop. Just, just gently. Just slightly. So it's like that. And put plenty of moisture on it. You vest off, cinch it down all in a wanna, then trying to just do a bit at a time. If you try and do a bit at a time, it'll just lock and won't cinch down as well as what it does. So basically, once you start getting it cinched up on here, just carry on with it, but nice and steady. Oh. Yeah, I've just gone totally against what I just said. You see, it just puts a nice bleb on the back of the hook. This line, it's never good. I'm never like obviously for 200 pound line, this is quite supple, but um, you're never going to be 110% happy with it, I don't think. But I'm relatively confident that if a fish picks that up, it's only going to get tired and it's not going to slip. Now, you can bleb the end of a lighter, you can use rig glue. I've used super glue. Um, from what I've read about super glue, it does create abrasion online. So I've never had it part with super glue under any circumstances, but I've only ever used super glue on like 200 pound plus mono. Um, but it does create abrasion online, so it can, with friction and stuff, it could potentially cut. I don't think it will be 200 pound unless you hook something, something massive. So then on the other end, put your 2 0 swivel. Again, it's a four turn blood knot. Like I said before, I made a bit of a mess of it on the other end. One, two, we're already, we're already on three there actually. So four, back through. Don't try and do any more or any less. It'll just make problems. I'll just put it through just slightly, put some moisture on it. And then just, uh, don't look yourself like I'm just doing now. Just cinch it down. 
I can't hold it up to the camera and do it. I've got to like, give it some proper sort of tension, if you like. But you get the drift. I'm sure. Again, let's put a nice blow on the back of the hook. So right, I've got about 10 more of these to make up and I'll show you the next bit. So that's 10 all tied up. So now I'm going to get on to the next part. Which might seem a strange thing to do this next part. See what you think. Alright, so I'm going to have these rigs ready, ready to hand, ready to go. Now, Mark Cyphers are really snaggy. So generally, if you get snagged up and you pull for a break, most of the time it does snap on the leader knot. <coughs> so there's two reasons why I'm doing this. That's the first reason. Snapping on the leader knot. I want to be back out again and fishing straight away. So I'm going to tie to the hook snood, to the swivel on the hook snood, 20 foot of leader, <laughs> 60 pound leader. It's cheap, two pound ten for a spool of this from boys. It's flooding. So form two two things. This will do. It'll uh, give me something to grab at when we're landing fish, congers, hopefully. Huss, maybe, um, dogfish, very likely. Um, but if it's a rough sea, it gives you something to grab at, especially if you're fishing on your own, it's, it's a bonus. If there's two of you, it's a bonus, isn't it? If you've got a leader. Um, so, yeah, so if it, that's the first reason why I'm using a leader. Well, there's a couple of reasons there. One, because if it snaps on leader, you're fishing again straight away, just tie your you rig on basically on the end of the leader. Um, and then the the next reason is if you hook a fish and it inhales the hook or you have to snip your snood for any reason to get the hook out you can just tie another rig straight back on and you're fishing again so in my head I'm thinking it's just a quicker way of fishing so I've got 20 foot for this my rods are 14 foot so I think 20 foot will do it to a reasonable amount you're not going to be you know it's different to like to, to tote fishing and all that it's just a different type of thick fishing this all together really um, so I'm just going to put tie that tie, get a hook snood, tie a uni, not in the leader to the swivel. As you can tell, I've got a bit of man flu. Do a four turn uni. I'll tell you what, sixty pound mono. That's sixty pound mono by the way. Not so well, a lot better than uh, two hundred. <laughs> So, snip it there. So, I'm 
like that. And then onto this. You do actually another thing that I've missed. Well, I can sort it out. Probably when I'm fishing, I'll sort it out. Free rot on bottom, but it doesn't really matter. On this, you put your bead on. It's a simple fishing this is going to be. For this type of fish, I'm not even going to use proper lens. I'm just going to use, I've got some old bars, jig, jig bars I'm going to use for this. It's certainly going to be a casting rig. So put your bead on like that and get your other swivel. You can use a zip slider, you can use a pulley bead, you can use anything for this. And if you do want to cast, put a bit of beef into it, cash, you can put a, an upside down bait clip on one of them Gemini ones or you can get cheaper ones off Amazon. Slide that down. Obviously it's one hell of a rig, 20, 20 foot a leader attached to it. <coughs> it just, uh, just makes it easy for fishing. So then that's what you're left with. It's basically a strong running ledger rig into it. So yeah, that's it. Let's hope we can do a few fish. Simple, like I say, there's nothing complicated about this. It's a single look. You can have present your bait, just hooking it through once, like say if it's a head of something. Or you can make like a sausage and just thread it up the hook and have it up to like here with the hook point exposed. Um, like I say on this, what I run on here, I put a 20 pound hook link, uh, 20 pound wheat linker line with the lead on. But you can incorporate a clip onto here. You can hook your lead on if you want to. Um, or you can get one of the leads that's got a bait clip already attached to it. If you do need to cast it, if you make your wheat linker line longer than your snood, you can then hang the lead on your um, hook because then your hook length will be taking the shock if you like, not the weak link line. There's a couple of ways of doing things. I haven't found that very successful on place where there's a lot of tide. Um, having a long, really long uh, lead link, say if, it were f if, if you've got two foot f uh, hook length and put a three foot lead link, I haven't found it very successful for some reason. I've only hooked one fish doing that. I don't know if there's anything in that. Uh, might have another go because I don't think it was as free flowing as that when I tried it before. And I find it can tangle up sometimes, so we'll see how that goes. Um, so, yeah, I think I might be planning in some conga fishing soon, hopefully. I don't know if it'll be this year or start next, but that's, uh, that's the rig I'm going to be using. So, yeah, so that's it, basically. Um, I put a clip in of the last decent conga I had. Um, I think it is a PEB, I'm not, I can't remember if I had anything bigger, I possibly could have done, only slightly though. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching and uh, hope this rig does me a few fish, basically, hopefully, hopefully if you use it, I hope it does you a few fish, so we'll, we'll see you soon, thank you very much. Hey, they're giving me away, I don't think it's a PB. but you never know. It's not camera off Jay and I'll give him away. So I'm really happy with that. Yeah, these are good too. Yeah. Nice one. Hey, we're gonna get this put back because I think Kay's got one on as well. <laughs> <laughs>